Last month, John asked me something. It's a weird question. He wanted to know what it's like to be an adult. Can you please stop? When do you stop being a kid? I didn't know what to tell him. I don't think he liked that. Tell your mother I'm here? No, she left. This is your life, John. This is what you want to do. This could be who you are. Hi, this is Anna. Hi, this is Anna. How's your day going, sir? Good, good. It's the okay. beginning of the week and it's finally the release of the film. So that's exciting. Yeah, congratulations. That is a big deal, right? Yeah, thank uh, you. Where are you right now? I'm in Brooklyn, in New York. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I know I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah, uh, it's next to Queens. Uh, Queens? Okay. <laughs> JFK, you know, yeah, got Isabel. It. Got it. Got All it. Right. Normally I'd be down there, but I'm actually, uh, I'm, um, I'm up a little north of the city these days and um, but coming down next week. So if you could wait till then, we could do this in person. I prefer that. Oh. I would too, as well, actually. I'm, I'm craving in-person things these days. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll, you should have it. You're going to be in uh, select theaters too, right? Obviously. So you're, right? You're going to yeah. be in theaters <clears throat> uh, the 6th, uh, <clears throat> right? So yeah. are you going to be doing some, while you're in New York, are you doing some uh, Q&As? Well, that's up in the air right now because obviously right. the Delta variant is coming in. So yeah. They have other plans for us. So it's been a little bit of a day by day thing. I, uh, I, I was going to be in LA actually, because it was also showing at the new art theater, which I've always yeah. loved and been there plenty of times. Uh, so we're kind of waiting. I think we're actually having a call today, maybe to discuss it, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing is set yet. So, yeah, well, I'm sorry for the stress because I'm sure, <laughs> you know, it seemed, it's, it probably seemed very likely things were going in a really po positive uh, direction for a while now we're back into this sort of limbo period but we'll make it through and people right. should know that John and the whole is going to be premiering on August 6th no matter what so right uh, <laughs> now it premiered at Cannes mm -hmm. and then it went to Sundance yes so um, that's pretty good track record right there isn't it yeah no I mean it's hard to beat uh, it's definitely you can't beat it actually you can't you can't uh, there's no hard I think yeah. There, it was, I mean, yeah, starting with Khan, it was like already set the bar tremendously and it was like really helpful for the film because it came at the darkest time in our recent history, just in the middle of the pandemic. So it was like nobody knew what was going to happen with theaters. Nobody knew if we could ever release this film or if it would be just straight to streaming with not any chance to being shown in festivals. And so it was a, a very dark time in general uh, yeah. at all levels. And I think psychologically it was like the light at the end of the tunnel that somehow yeah uh, helped us get through to this anyway well fortunately the subject matter is so <coughs> funny and um and then there's this music it's a musical comedy it's called no it's not it's it's actually not <laughs> that's funny nico we always joke about musical comedies because uh, <laughs> it's it, it would be the biggest challenge to make ever because it's probably the polar opposite of of what we are, but right. one day maybe, who knows? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a disturbing story, but it, you know, um, uh, you have such great actors. Um, and I was thinking as I was reading about about the film too, is uh, the you know, the young actor who plays uh, John uh, is played by Charlie uh, Shotwell. His name is Charlie Shotwell, and um, you know, he's uh, I guess the premise, right? He he comes across this well, um, which is somewhere close to his parent his house where he's growing where his family lives. Um, hey, hey, I have a question about that 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 look that. Uh, location actually what can you talk about just like i'm just curious from a um uh i guess a technical standpoint i guess was how did you set that up and did you i mean i clearly you you created this location right i mean mm -hmm. yeah no it was i mean there were many different variations of how it was going to happen the first okay. one was we just dig a hole and we just do it the way that <laughs> yeah. you know it's scripted Right. Uh, then we realized that there's logistical problems with the fact that anything that you build below six feet, I believe, needs some structural support. So then it would be almost like the same cost as building a parking lot, you know, like an underground par parking lot. You would need retaining walls and you would need like a certain amount of concrete. Oh. So it became like engineering suddenly rather than set design. Uh, so that kind of killed that idea. Huh. And, and then we knew that we wanted, uh, I mean, I initially wanted them to be contained there as much as possible i mean with with jennifer and, and michael c hall and taisa we, we even discussed that and i'm like i would have loved to have kept you there you know and have to race you and lower you every time and just have this physicality to the space uh but then we also wanted to have control over the camera and like the lighting be able to match the lighting with the outside so we shot in a stage um and we built the whole jacqueline abraham's the production designer did an incredible job at, she did. at making it feel as concrete as possible even though it was not and just uh create this sort of like brutalist bunker space um that we initially discussed and then from there we um let me add a notification thing so get that out of the way but um and then, of course, we needed the exterior because then it was like going to be a conversation of how to integrate the exterior with the interior and then how to be able to work with that. Because obviously the actor or John Charlie Shotwell's outside looking down at the family in a stage yeah, somewhere else in somewhere else in Massachusetts a right. week later uh, and how they could have this conversation. And we knew that a lot of it was going to be like a cut reverse shot type of thing that they were yeah. looking up and then we get the reversal shot. So uh yeah it was frightening in a way to think of doing this uh as well but then and then an added issue that we had that we actually did not have the exterior location of the hole until like around three days before we started shooting so you know wow. okay so just so people understand <laughs> you got the you've shot you have this house you found in massachusetts outside cambridge or in cambridge massachusetts mm -hmm. uh lincoln massachusetts have, say Lincoln, Massachusetts, actually, Lincoln, to be, to be speak. yeah. Okay, and then you have, is that a Boston suburb? Yeah, it's close to Cambridge still, so it's like, oh, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, how far from Mass Ave? No, I'm kidding. So, so, yeah. so uh, you have that, you have the house, so you have those, you shot the exteriors and the interiors, obviously, with this house. It's very mm -hmm. spacious, light air, right? Yeah. Great, great house to film in, I'm sure. And then you have the well, which is supposed to be again behind the house. And then, but it turns out that that probably was a different place, of course. Mm -hmm. Then much inside, farther than behind the house. <laughs> and then <inside laughs> thirty minutes, was, thirty minutes in by car. He, he drugs his family, this young boy, and he gets, gets on a bus. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's complicated, but he manages to get them while they're. Uh, 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 un, uh, unconscious into the into the hole, and then you have the scenes in there which you already described. So there's all, and then you have the just when what what appears to be the spot by uh, this unfinished uh, project, which was somebody had who had lived there before. It was building a bunker and never finished it. So yeah, yeah. So it's sort of the outside area of that well. So these are all different, very complicated. Yeah, I mean it's a uh, it's very simple on one hand because. Like in the narrative, it's just a house. Right. Yeah. And behind the house, there's maybe some public forest land that he walks into and then right. he finds this land. Uh, so narratively speaking, it's very simple. But then, of course, 
you know, like we said, we had to do this, the interior of the hole in a stage, and then we had to find the exterior, which needed to be like an open clearing in a forest that where we could build potentially like a shorter version of the hole, which we ended up building, like, I, I believe a five to six foot uh, version of it. Uh, just so we could put the camera and like shoot up at, at uh, John. Right, right. right and right. then, so that happened somewhere else. And, and we did have, it's not that we didn't have a location until three days before the shoot. We did have a location. It wasn't ideal. We weren't loving it, but we had something. And then in the process of, you know, doing the whole pre-production, we found this incredible location. Actually, again, Jacqueline Abraham mm -hmm. drove back past it and found something. And then we we had this memorable moment that we both walked and then, it wasn't perfect. And then I kept walking and, and, and I'm like, what about behind that tree? And we kept walking. And, and then we had this conversation at the end and she's like, wow, if we wouldn't have been like, no, no, it's gotta be something else behind and walked an extra half a mile per se, we would never have found it because it was a little secluded. Uh, and it used to be some type of shooting range, something. So there's these like pillars, concrete pillars that to me, when we found it, it looked like some ancient ruins you know but they were in concrete so it's obviously as if we would leave ruins for the future generations it would be our ruins for right. the future so it already had a very sort of mysterious aura to this place right, right. Yeah, so we so immediately interesting yeah go ahead, i'm sorry no that we immediately responded to it and we're like wow this is much more than we had anticipated in a way and it's already perfect as is so all we have to do is of course bring a few more props around and dress it up a little bit and then and then actually create the outer hole which is just this outer like the lip part that's sticking out of it yeah, yeah, uh, yeah right and we did so and we were able to i think it's because there were supposed to be maybe underwater wells and like some other things so we we were lucky that i, I believe we built or we went down five feet and then we kept digging and it was starting to get moist so there oh. might have been yeah. some like eventually you get to like more on you know we Ground wouldn't be able to be there yeah, uh, yeah exactly so so that once we locked that in then it was much easier, not easier. It's something that became in the editing with Sarah Shaw, our editor, that uh, we did great in being able to integrate all these places together. Uh, well, it would be a, a mistake not to mention like what people might be wondering who haven't seen the film yet. Like, why why would he put his family in in this well? Well, that's what the film is getting at. And and you you I read in the notes that it's described at least in in your words as something called affluenza, which I was a term I wasn't familiar with, but do you want to just sort of, I mean, I kind of look like this kid is, seems like he's empty, you know, mm -hmm. and he needs to fill this. And, uh, right. you know, yeah, I mean, to get metaphorical about it. Right. If you, you, you could take it in that sense as well, that there's obviously something, some sense of numbness or something that's lacking that he doesn't quite, he's not quite able to point it out or to figure it out. So, so well, he's very young. Yeah. Yeah. And, but we're also, that's why the whole film is like, we don't know as well. I wanted to approach the film in a way that we're with him. We're at the same pace as he is. And we're trying to find things out the same way he is. And a lot of times you don't find things out and you're still coping with it and you're still trying to understand it. And for me, there's a lot of emotionally emotional content that you can take from it and to be able to possibly figure out later on. Uh, but, but it was important that we weren't into like this, good and bad or this dichotomy of like good versus evil or he did this and this caused that action reaction it wasn't so much about that it was more about of course there's a lot of things that were beneath the surface and probably unseen and unspoken and not even on the film that were present that led him to do this uh the point is that something some sense of numbness led him to do this and he did it and he responded in a very right brain uh reptile brain like lower brain kind of intuitive action and then he had to cope with the consequences of that so he had to learn to figure out what to do with and, and take action for uh take response for his actions so um <laughs> yeah. in, in some ways it's that's a bit of what the film is about i think i went on a tangent from your initial <laughs> no, uh, no 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 that's what it was good uh, uh, um yeah so, so yeah, so in a way, it's like, it was always really important for us to like approach it in a way, oh, the affluenza, that was what's lacking. Uh, it's not really about affluenza, but in the process that we were writing the script or Nico was writing the script and I was getting involved in the last drafts of it with him and discussing the more like the production aspects of it. Uh, I remember that we read this case of the affluenza oh, kid. Right. So it was in the news at the time. It's and not a bad, I mean, I, 
I, well, you know, what we're get, what you get at, I mean, I, I don't want to give too much away, but, 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 you know, when you have all your need, I, I, I love this concept because if you uh, have all your needs met and you, 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 you need like that's uh, as a parent, I don't know. Are you a parent, for instance? I'm soon to be actually oh. in a few months. So, okay. Yeah, I'll have to deal with that in my own way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's a matter of it's constantly this, this uh, balance of like how much do you want your kids to have to work, you know, like suffer. Right. Because a little suffering now can actually create a stronger, more confident, sure. confident Completely. individual who knows they have the capacity to work out problems on their own. So you have to kind of feed them and, you know, let them experience. Yeah. Let them fall. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes, you know, being called names, it's never a nice thing, but sometimes they have to figure that negative relationships out because we have endless ones as we are uh, right. in our adult lives. No, and, and um, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, for me, it, it builds character and it's something that it's yes. like completely, I mean, actually there's two cases and two articles that relate to this in a way, I believe, uh, I don't know if they're both from the New York Times, but then first it was the affluenza kid was more general news that it was some kid that ran over a bunch of people or had this accident that they, I, I believe like, I don't know the specifics of it now, but it was like, he got trial of it. And then the lawyer came up with this word. It's not a word that exists that he mixed influenza with affluence. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and then, created this thing that he's like, because he had so much, he's not able to empathize in a way and he's not able to, to see the consequences of his actions. And he, they were trying to get him out of it because of this, because of this right. innocence and naivety, which in a way, sure, there's some level of understanding to that, but also you look at the victim standpoint and it's a completely different thing. And <laughs> how, how was he able to get to that state is the problem. But uh, so that that was I mentioned it in a few cases because there was something of the class conversation about John being in an upper middle class. And, you know, of course, there's a level of affluence. But then there's another article that I remember reading also in the process. So these were not part of the genesis of the project. These were not part of the no, like, no, they, initial it was adapted from a short story that had nothing to do with those. Exactly. Came out so, yeah. But we read this thing and I love working on any project that of course anything you see is related to the project somehow the moment yeah. you start working on it everything is about the project yeah. uh so then this other article came in the new york times about this uh they talk about the previous generation being this helicopter parenting of how parenting were like hovering around making sure you didn't do anything bad but this newer generation there's a lot of uh snowplow parenting they call it and it's about like a snowplow machine just clearing the way before the kids walk the path so it would yeah. clear any bumps or any obstacles so when they walk it's like an easy journey however the consequences of that in the long run are probably like we're saying they're probably much more problematic right, when because you hit things that road that's not been plowed then you don't yes like now it's... how do i move forward i can't exactly you don't see beyond the obstacles yeah. and it they might have a total dramatic and they might create a bigger problem than you ever had if you had to fall down get hurt i mean when i was a kid i would fall most of my moments of greatest learning was when i made mistakes in a way like i fell i was climbing and i fell down a cliff and then i was like okay maybe i should be more careful next time like <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. so it, it is in those moments that you really learn well you don't have a helicopter in the film or helicoptering but you have a drone a drone yeah, yeah which is, <laughs> uh, but i i one thing and i think we're we have to run uh sort of um uh you know ending the uh conversation shortly but um winding right. it down but but um i kind of felt like this age where you know john is at um you know there's a lot of anxiety because you're entering you know into adulthood uh, young and and with the um you know and that uh, all that that brings, the, the, the anxiety that that brings, it's a lot of, it's a, it's, it is um, having raised a child. I mean, it's, um, you know, a scary time when you're all of a sudden the, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with growing up and he's on that cusp, you know? Mm -hmm. So there, this is a psychological horror film story, but, um, and I see it, you know, it's like, it, it's an, an extension of what, and it may be an, an exaggeration on some level of what somebody at that age and that time might be feeling. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, completely for me, we always talked about it as being a psychological coming of age film in a way, because it is like, or 
thriller within, but uh, because it is, it's a state that from the outside, most people be like, oh, you're just a kid, deal with it, it's fine, you know, it's not that, but it is like, you know, you're yeah. going through all these emotions, you're going through this, you're learning everything, you're learning your sense of morality, you're learning your intellect, you're developing your intellect, your way of conversation, manipulation, like all these things that are coming into play that you're not familiar with. So and it's mom all, and dad isn't, you know, they're not, you know, you got to go to the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> Nobody's there to wipe your butt, you know, right. It's <laughs> scary. You know, it's like all these things I have to do. I'm, you know, it's responsibility for self. It's awareness of self and mm -hmm. all that, that the impact of all that on you, you know? Right. Um, uh, yeah, completely. I mean, uh, and he decides to accelerate that process a right. little more than yeah. normally we would do. You know, you would go That's true. at a slower pace and he just creates an event that accelerates this and, and, and makes it happen all of a sudden. So he has to put the pieces together in a way. It's almost like he destroys the whole structure and then he has to kind of like figure out in his own. Right, um, yeah, right, right. right. Uh, it's called John in the Hole. It's opening on the 6th of August, um, thanks to IFC Films. And uh, I, I appreciate doing this with you and meeting you. And I have a feeling we will do it again. Yeah. On a future project, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, that too. Hopefully we'll all be back to normal at one point and yeah. we can get back to, to doing this again. Yeah. And I'll come in person you. next time. Exactly. And <laughs> then maybe your next film I'll see in a theater and, you know, not that I can't, but... Right. Anyway, well, you can I, come down for the for the weekend. Uh, exactly. All right. Well, good luck with it. And um, it was nice meeting you. And you're heading back to Spain at some point soon, I assume. And yeah. Well, actually, I was just there, so I'll, I'll stay put okay. for a while. Okay. Uh, no rush. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Adam. Thank you. <laughs>